Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Kate Valentine. I'm the founder of Singing Mama's Choir and I'm on a personal mission to meet choir composers and to find out a little bit more about the work that lies behind the songs that we love in our choirs. So I'm delighted to have Kaisa Norby come and join us in the second part of our series of Meet the Choir Composers. So welcome Kaisa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to come on and be interviewed. We thoroughly enjoyed your songline session on Friday where you taught one of your own compositions. I, I found it a personal highlight your songline share. So thank you for that. Thank you. It was really, really nice. And I've got a lot of like good comments after it. So that feels, feels really good. Yeah. Well, and it also stayed in, in my weekend, that song. So, and, and luckily it's now on YouTube, so you can find it if you, if you search. And the name of the song? Uh, the name of the song is Dag Polska. And that means Jew. Polska. Polska is a dance and you is Dag. Ah, oh, wonderful. So you can look that up on YouTube and, and, and watch Kaiser's teach. It's a, it's a really lovely teach. I think you broke down the parts as well, didn't you, Kaiser? Yeah, I wanted, yeah, it's like, it's not a performing video. It's more like, yeah, you can learn the song from the video and Great. yeah, I'm trying to like talk you through it in the same time as I'm singing it. So. Okay, so go and definitely go and watch that after you've heard a little bit more about Kaisa. So can we dive straight into the questions, Kaisa? Yes. Okay, so random question. Do you have a favourite note or a favourite interval? Uh, I think I really like minor. Do you call it minor? Minor key, yeah. Minor key, yeah. And then I also really love uh, drones okay so often yeah often I, I put a drone in the music in some way yeah <laughs> <laughs> what is it you love about a drone it's just really magic and it's it's really really simple to write a drone everyone can do it and <laughs> in the same time it's just I mean, uh, it's magic and it creates magic because suddenly you get all these like uh, special harmonies. Uh, just melody and drone can be really beautiful. Mm. And even if it's easy to write it, it's quite difficult to sing it though. Interesting. Yeah. Kaisa, will you tell me about when you were younger, little Kaisa, what did she like to listen to? What was her, what was her influences growing up in the world of music? Uh, I'm the youngest of five uh, siblings. So I suppose I listened to the music, what they were listening to. Um, so it was not before like when I was 14 then I find myself in folk music. So folk and uh, world music is like the, yeah, I started to listen to that. And I love uh, the like gypsy music. Music. Yeah, traveling people. Yeah. From so Romania and Bulgaria. And so, so that was like my thing when I was 14. <laughs> 14 year old Kaiser living in Sweden listening yeah. to gypsy folk music. Yeah, to the do. youngest of five. That's an amazing <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. there a lot of music in your household? And a yeah. lot of singing. Was there, was there much singing happening? Yeah, we are, all my siblings are singing. So we are actually often singing together. Uh, so it's like a little mini choir when we meet. We don't meet very often but when we do we can sing together all of us uh, and but our parents they were not musicians or anything but I think they were really good culture uh, consumers uh -huh. so we really we went to the theater and to the concerts and we they really encouraged us to do it and sing and so sounds idyllic can you um, remember the the very first time you wrote a song 
Yeah, I think it was uh, also like around when I was 14. Uh, and I wrote a melody and my sister's boyfriend said, oh, that's a folk tune. It's a typical folk tune because it's like a A part and a B part. And it sounded like folk, folk music. Uh, so I was like, oh yeah. But I didn't have any words or anything. And then I had to put any words on it. So the words was Låten. And that's like the song. And I just said, Lo, lo, <laughs> yeah, but I still remember the melody. And you, you remember that that was my next question. Come on, how did the melody go? That stayed. <laughs> how did that? How did that feel? Can you remember? And, and how, do you, how do you even relate to that now, that first song that you wrote? How did it feel at the time and how do you relate to that as, as the first one that you remember? Well, now when I'm singing it, it's like I'm coming back to my children's home and I, I just see the room and the light and everything, how it is there and how I'm like sitting at the piano and trying to improvise my own little songs. Wow. Wonderful. And so since that moment, that first song, have there been many songs that you've created? I think it hasn't been that many, but in, in another way, it has been really a lot because I think I make up songs every day. <laughs> in a, I think it's so, it's like, and in the same time, I'm, I, I judge myself and I say, this is not finished. This is not the song. It's just an improvisation, just making sounds. But actually, I think in this, it's actually songs. But maybe I don't like put a name on it and say this is. Finished. Are you so? That's interesting because I'm I'm I, I'm trying to imagine what it's like to be someone that that can create songs. So. Are you saying that they just kind of bubble up in you or do you have a time when you go to the desk and think now I'm going to apply myself to bringing up a song? How does it work for you? Uh, it works if I let them bubble up. Uh -huh. if, I decide, if I have decided that, oh, I want to write a song about this, now I have to write a song about this. Nothing happens. No. Wow. Okay. Uh, I have, so it's not like song catching. Ah. So, yeah. <laughs> I've heard about this phenomena happening. So the, some of the Singing Mama's choir leaders that have begun this work as a choir leader or so, rather song sharer yeah. have had this happening as a, almost a side effect. They've, they're kind of coming into connection with each other saying, this thing happened. I, I heard a song. Yeah. Is that the kind of thing that happened? Uh, and often when it's like when I'm doing something else like sitting in the at the toilet or <laughs> driving the car or whatever it's like then uh, when I'm not uh, I think I have really big ambition with what I do but if I come into like prestige then it's like pff, I can't do anything so it's good to do something else when I'm walking that's a perfect way and often I don't bring my phone. I often record on my phone when, when these melodies come up. I uh -huh. record it on my phone. So I'm up on 200 like recording on my phones now, just small melodies. And, and when you hear one, how does it feel? Does it, does, it have a, does it carry a feeling or a sensation when it bubbles up? Uh, sometimes. Can you describe that? And sometimes I just, I just let it be. I just let it be as it is. Uh, and just, I think it's just important to, to start to, to let it come out. Uh, because if, if I let it come out, it can come more. Uh -huh. Like I give place to other things to come. But if I, if I like stop myself, 
uh, then I get blocked. So the more that comes, the more will come. I it's so interesting to hear you describe this. It's kind of, it goes against um, what I would have imagined, you know, being someone that can create songs and harmony songs and, and particularly the song you shared on Friday, which was one of your own songs, sounded so classic. It sounded so traditional, it so belonged to your, um, it, it sounded so Swedish, you know, it was, it was, it was incredible. And uh, to think that that would be something that you could just allow, like come out of your way and, allowed to be birthed is extraordinary yeah and how do you know when they're finished or complete or ready i i think uh i'm really bad at finishing uh, like make something finished uh because i have so i'm quite hard on myself and i think like no this is not good enough and this is not uh, I mean, the melody is coming like that and I'm recording it. And, but then I start to work on it and maybe words mm -hmm. or harmonies or whatever. Uh, but I've actually given myself, like I used to give to, to people that I guide and lead in songwriting. I used to like give them a frame. You have 20 minutes, that's it. <laughs> and it's supposed to be finished. Okay. Because then I have to decide. This is this is enough. That's yeah. that's it. yeah. That'll that'll do, and it's good enough. Uh, so I think for me, it's, it has been a, a really good exercise now uh, to put out things, share things uh, with people, and say this is uh, this is a song. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is so when 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 you do that, when you dare to do that, because it's vulnerable, right? How yeah. does that feel, putting your song out there for the first time for other people to hear and, and sing and to experience? Well, I... <laughs> it's like... Uh, I really want to do it. Mm. Uh, but it's like I... I don't think... I mean, this can't be good enough. It's much easier to share someone else's song or a song that I've heard and like been singing with players before and I know how it works. It's really, yeah, I feel really vulnerable to share yeah. my own song. And I think the people that I share it with, they don't realize how scary that is. So it's like, well, okay, we'll sing that as we sing other songs. Mm. It's not like, oh yeah, you did it. It's not, mm. I don't give, get anything back like that. There's like, uh, so I often feel quite lonely, I think, when mm. I share my songs because it's like, uh, what do you call that? Uh, I'm showing myself. I'm like taking my clothes off and just, uh, uh huh, exposing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Way. yeah. Uh, well, they they they're deeply personal. If they come, if they bubble up through you in that way, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, and so so do you like getting feedback for, from your work and um, hearing from people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. It helps, does it? Yeah. It's helps yeah, yeah. And in, in the same time I, I i would love to be that person that just don't care about that but i i really need feedback uh, and even if i get feedback i might not be able to uh, receive it yeah to take, to take it in yeah but uh still it helps yeah uh, and maybe if i like write it down i can remember it some yeah. week after and just oh yeah maybe it was good enough <laughs> maybe I could yeah. sing it again well it'll be interesting in the series to see um all the different kind of kinds of choir composers um how they answer the, the same question I think that um, you know I'm interested to see what what that how that is for for all people sharing their own work yeah so let me ask you another couple of questions so how do you know how how your songs have traveled no I don't know. Okay. Uh, I have. 
I've shared my songs. Uh, I have been like leading groups, uh, teach the songs that I've written. And I don't know if they have like been singing those songs again or not. Um, but sometimes uh, someone has asked me to, to get a, the score or whatever. So it happens uh, and I'm really glad when it happens because it's really nice to know that people are singing it. And I always say, please come back to me and just ask me or tell me how it goes because, and that's not because I want to control them. It's like, I think, I think they can do whatever with a song. If they do it with love, that's, that's, uh, they can do whatever with the song if, if it's like pure love. Uh, but I would love to, to hear how it goes because it's like, it's really, it gives me energy to carry on my work. So it's nothing about control and, oh, this is supposed to be sung like that. No. Uh, well, this is good to know. So if someone hears one of your songs, yeah. And, and they want to share it, they hear it by ear and they want to share it. What, what should they do? What's the, how, how is the way they, they give back to you? Uh, yeah, please contact me through email or Facebook. Uh, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll certainly be sharing those links for sure. Yeah. And so what I'd, I'd really love, Kaisa, is for you to just tell us, because I, I feel like you're on quite a mission with your work and I'd love to hear from you yourself, what what is this mission like? What are you doing with your work right now? Right now, I I live on a farm in the middle of nowhere in Sweden, in a little 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 village called Longrodna. The village has like three houses, so really small. Uh, and here I have created a culture center. And I welcome people. I have choirs during the terms, so different like community choirs, women's choir, different choirs. Uh, and I also freelance and have workshops in different places. Uh, but I welcome all to take part of these choirs and workshops that I do. This the culture center that you've that you've built and you've built your work around and the, and the workshops that you host will definitely be will be posting links along with this video so anyone that's interested in working alongside you they'll you know they'll be able to to see some of the workshops you offer but why am I really interested what's what underpins that what's your mission what's your guiding light what what do you what's underneath all of that for Kaiser well I think for me to work on the countryside with culture has been a really big mission. Uh, I think uh, it happens where you are. A lot of people think it happens in the cities. So they move to the cities. Mm. I moved out on the countryside and I think it doesn't matter where you live, but if you, if you really want to do something and just do it where you are, I think that you can create whatever. Uh, and I love the countryside and I really want to create a community and life on the countryside. I mean, Sweden is a really big country. It's a lot of land where no one lives uh, or just one or two. Uh, but I think it's important to get the people from the city out on the countryside instead. You've, you've got something special to offer them there. Yeah. And, and so the ones that might want to come and join you in a, a songwriting or song creating workshop. Yeah. Do they need experience? What do they need to know? Like, is it for everyone? It's for everyone. Absolutely for everyone. And I think it's the best, uh, the best mix of group is when it's different people, like really experienced people and someone who has never done anything like that before. And when I have like this creative songwriting courses, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm, I've had just, I don't have big groups because I don't want big groups in that, like six or seven. And we really, really work. And it's, uh, I give them frames and I want them to come from here and understand 
we all can write music. We all can write songs, lyrics, whatever. And, and in the same, yeah, the same way as I said, like, if I let it come out and yeah. don't stop it, uh, I don't get blocked. And I think that's the biggest problem. A lot of people are blocked because they think, oh no, uh, they think it's like they think they should write that song, uh -huh. that uh, particular song. Uh, and they think about, oh, they wait for this special, like, song that they will create in their life. Mm. And I think it's better to just let it come out, just maybe silly, maybe whatever. And if you start to let it come out, yes. it will just come more and more and more. And do you, have you got any idea why, why do you think that is, you know, we, we were all singers once upon a time and, and uh, we, we were having this conversation before we started to record this and, you know, song sharing also was, was an ancient way. And, and why is it now that people think that, why are so, people so blocked with that? And why are they waiting for this ultimate moment of this song? Like, what, what do you think that is? What, what does that speak of? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, but but it's clear that it is. And I think, but it might be different in different places in the world, though. Mm -hmm. But in the West world, though, and like my culture, your culture here, I think it's a lot of prestige and a lot of you should be, uh, you are doing things for someone else and you, you will get the feedback. They will say if you are good or bad. And uh, some people can sing, they are on the stage, the other people listen. Some people can write music, they do that. Uh, and I think, yeah, as you said before, like you're two years old, or, yeah, she's making up songs all the time. I think we, I think that's in us. Mm. Uh, I don't know why I think that's in us, but I think it is. <laughs> Uh, and we have been singing and we have been dancing and mm. like, yeah, creating mm. stuff. Now as well, I think we are so good consumers, just consuming all the time um, with like computer TV and things like that, like things filling us. Uh, maybe we don't get time to even let it grow. In that creative flow. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just wanted to ask one more thing, Kaisa, and that's that's something around, um, you know, you've you've shared that you you're happy for your songs to travel, and um, and you've shared also that you're vulnerable about kind of putting them out there, and um, so what I, I'm sensing this this isn't a kind of um, kind of chosen career path that you're, um, you know, seeing your choir composing as a as a as a business kind of that's not the kind of design however um is there a way that you can be paid for your compositions that people want to then go on and use in their work as a as a teacher and, and song sharer i think i, I absolutely think uh, i th i think i actually think in business way as well okay um, but uh, I think the real, real life and the real, like when you meet each other in, I don't know how to say this in English, but when you really, really meet each other and uh, share uh, the important things, um, I think that is what people need, really. And then they will <laughs> buy that because that's what, what can, uh, what is sustainable. It's like, I think a lot of other things, maybe they are short and, and business, often business is like, it sh it's supposed to go like this and it's like, yeah, the next step, the next step. Yeah. And I don't believe in that. Uh, but still, I believe in what 
I do so hardly, like so so much uh, that it is actually a business. Even if my song goes to one person mm -hmm. and it's important for that person and me and that meeting. Yes. Uh, I, I don't uh, take it down like it's not, oh, it's just for fun or it's for, yes. okay. I still want it to be really professional. Yes. Uh, professional, but with a lot of heart and soul. Yes. Um, so, so we've got we've got a challenge, haven't we? As a, um, as a kind of um, choir leaders, song sharers that are networked, our challenge to kind of value and uphold each other's work and allow them to continue in that work. Yeah. Um, at the same time, keeping this essence of love with, in which it was created and shared. Yeah. And I I personally feel at the moment that we've got and and me leading a network of leaders this responsibility to to keep hold of that with which this song was created and the gesture which it was given and at the same time um where we can really keep supporting that that person in their her creative or his creative work mm -hmm. and so with the digital age where everything is so quick and easy to share you know we're we're, we're on digital now we're on zoom i mean the technology is is above and beyond where I thought we'd be, but here we are. And so for example, your song that you shared on Songline, it was, you know, there were hundreds of people that viewed it and saw it, you know, how do we keep something, you know, it's, it's out there, it's free in the world now, it's there, it's gone viral digitally in its own way, but how do, how do we keep hold of, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an open question really, creating this culture with which we know that, okay, Kais is someone that um, we can, if we want to teach in our choirs, we can come back and we can support Kais's work this way. And, you know, we, we've got work to do here, I think, with our, with our networking. And I think, I think it's really important to have, uh, I mean, we often talk like about the respect for other cultures or the respect for songwriters or whatever. Uh, and I think it's really important with respect but I think the respect that I believe in is love if you love if you really like show your love for a song I would be so so glad to hear uh, a Swedish song or my own song in England with a just crappy English and maybe the wrong <laughs> rhythm and whatever and I just oh yeah they did it they they love this, they sing it. And I think that should be like, that's the thing. And that's the respect, I think. Uh, it's, it's much worse if you think, okay, Swedish is really difficult. This is a difficult rhythm. This is a difficult language. I have to do it right. And if I don't do it right, that's not respect. And then I can't do it. Uh, I think that's completely wrong because yeah. then you may never do it because you are so yeah. afraid to making it uh -huh. not right. Yeah. So I think, I think for me, it's, that's my way also to sing other people's songs and share other people's songs. If I do it with love and really like respect for like, mm -hmm. this is, I really love this and I might cry when I'm singing it and it's like, yeah and we sang it yeah we did it uh, and maybe if it's a south african song and they will just what language is this because they can't hear what it is or what uh, but i think for me uh, it's more important to do it and that people do it that people carry on those songs and if someone hears a song or sing a song with me and want to share it you i would love you to do that and please contact me if you wonder anything you can just contact me that's not difficult and uh, amazing so it's very very generous it's, it's beautiful thank you it's yeah it's it's wonderful to hear your your position there with your with your work and it's very inspiring thank you so before we go is there anything that you've got in the pipeline any projects that you'd really love to tell us about um, 
I I'm not very good at like being uh, far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's better to just uh, contact me or follow me on Facebook or whatever and befriend me or what. Yeah, and uh, I have a lot of like ideas mm -hmm. uh, all the time. And uh, I just, it's like I have to clear out what ideas I actually will. Uh -huh. Well, when I'm looking and seeing cow calling workshops mm -hmm. and singer songwriting workshops and creative workshops for women, I feel like the next time there's a, uh, we're currently on the COVID um, global pandemic, if you're watching this in the future. So as soon as the um, airports open again, I think I might be booking my ticket to Sweden to come and stay with you, Kaisa, because... Um, it, yeah, it, one, one thing that I really want to do in the future when we can gather again, that I, I plan to do this, uh, this spring, but I didn't, uh, is a creative woman course uh, or a creative woman camp. So like a group of women coming here, uh, living together for some days uh, and sharing their work so you can be an artist, a singer, a songwriter, uh, making pottery or build houses or writing or whatever and then you have a workshop for one and a half hour and you share that with the other people so everyone gets like something from someone else beautiful or a lot of things from other people and give something from themselves that sounds absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I think the only possible complaint there that, that would be coming from the guys <laughs> when you say it's for women only. <laughs> but it sounds absolutely yeah. fine. Kaisa, thank you so much. I've thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you a bit more and hearing about your work. And I really sincerely hope we stay in contact and I'm sure we will. And yeah. you know, we're certainly Singing Mama's Choir in collaboration now with you, um, and a wonderful musician and very generous heart. So um, thank you very much once again. Thank you. Nice to have this meeting with you. <laughs> <laughs>